Every day is a special day. But this one is even more special. Why? It's a double nine. But we'll get there. Before that, I want to ask you two things. What if you could challenge the impossible? What if you could be eternal? According to science, what makes humans different than other animals is the ability to think, reflect, and create knowledge. Allow me to take one step further. In my opinion, what makes us humans is the ability to dream, to wish for things that we haven't got yet, to be crazy. My name is Eric Schorz and I'm 50 years old. And yes, some people would call me crazy. In fact, I consider myself to be crazy because I believe, because I dream, and because when I was young, I used to watch Space 1999 and Star Trek on the neighbor's black and white TV, and I really believe the automatic doors would become real. Come on, who in the right mind would believe a door would open alone when some houses didn't even have one? I've been around computers since I was 14 years old. I was just a kid believing a computer could make everything like a god. I was wrong, or not. I still, be, I still remember the damn question I made to my first microcomputer, ZX81. Please draw the planet Saturn. The answer was even number, zero by zero. How could I expect that the machine would answer a request given by a human, right? The point is, as technology evolves, what seems science fiction today may become the most common thing in the future. Now, I would like to take you with me in a time travel, another science fiction thing I persist believing that will be possible, or already is. Imagine yourselves as people from the 60s traveling to the present day. We are talking about 50 years, half century. You are people traveling from a era where, when just a few houses had telephone to a time when you can drive automatic cars, surfing the World Wide Web, or even have a profession such as a drone driver. Of course, you would think this is some kind of magic. And if you reflect about it, there is some magic in it. All technological change occurs at an exponential rate. However, by nature, people are linear thinkers, not exponential thinkers. It's difficult to imagine how things are going to be in the future, since technology is developing faster and faster. We seem to live in a world in which only now matters. Think about Snapchat and, and, and Instagram, for instance. Uh, sometimes a few seconds are enough. But uh, uh, answer this question. Most of us tend to click on that tiny button, save. Why? These kind of features were made to last one second, one minute, one day. But we need something more. We need to be able to replay. We need to keep. We need to immortalize. What if I told you that there are people that believe that one of the professions of the future, it will be the digital debt managers? I I imagine your Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus accounts, and someone that will take care of your, your digital trace, creating, eliminating, editing, or ever, after you pass away. Crazy, isn't it? 
However, I've got an idea even crazier. With all the technology we uh, have got nowadays, I believe this role can be played by a machine. The new social network ITER9 was created keeping in mind this major goal, merging human with machine so both could reach some kind of singularity. ITER9 allows users to interact within the network 24-7 through an element called counterpart, which will be active inside the network and will be transformed and in a, a digital self of each user. Imagine this uh, robot learning with every interaction you do inside the network and become your second half in a, a digital way. To put this con co concept of the singularity into perspective, I would like to, uh, let's explore the, the, the word itself. In mathematics, the term means infinity. In physics, Singularity also represents an event or a location with infinite power. Imagine the center of a, bl a black hole. The matter is so dense that its gravity is infinity. The universe itself is said to have begun with singularity. Werner Vinge described technological singularity as the result of the entities with greater than human intelligence. He wrote, he wrote that we will have the technological means to create superhuman intelligence, and shortly after, the human era will be ended. My opinion is that human era will not end. Instead, it will be reborn, or if you want, reinvented. Trans and post-human minds will lead to a different future. I believe we'll, we'll be better as you merge with our technology. In the near future, I can see each one of us with, with our own doppelganger walking by our side. This may sound a little bit crazy or creepy, but answer this question. Who hasn't got a smartphone here right now? That's right, everyone has some kind of gadgets in the pocket, wrist, uh, ads, or whatever. These kind of gadgets are your doppelgangers, containers. Machine learning is based on the idea that machines should be able to learn from previous computations to produce reliable decisions and results. Machine learning is not new, but recent developments lead to the ability to automatically analyze big data over and over, faster and faster. I would say artificial intelligence is finally getting intelligent. But returning to the smartphones again, each one of us use these gadgets like a tool. Our extension as a sidekick, that's exactly the job of a doppelganger or a counterpart, as you call it at ETER 9. The, the job of this counterpart is a way of absorbing every movement, every, every behavior, every data surround us and become our digital version. Then we can live forever in the cyberspace through our transformed, digital transformed version based on all the knowledge we receive with this experience. 
you will be able to talk to people you haven't met yet. Your digital version will be able to talk to people that are not born yet. I guess at this point, most of you should consider, consider myself a really crazy. <laughs> I don't know if you think about this, but it's quite amazing, don't you think? Not the fact I'm being crazy, but all this technology, all the things you can do with it. Now, I would like to finish with a poem from Fernando Pessoa, a Portuguese, a very famous and eternal for me, Fernando Pessoa, a Portuguese writer. I have it here in my doppelganger's uh, container, my smartphone. Não sei quantas almas tenho. Cada momento mudei. Continuamente me estranho. Nunca me vi nem achei. De tanto ser, só tenho alma. Quem tem alma, não tem calma. Quem vê, é só o que vê. Quem sente, não é quem é. Atento ao que sou e vejo, torno-me eles e não eu. Cada meu sonho ou desejo é do que nasce e não meu. Sou minha própria paisagem, assisto à minha passagem, diverso, móvel e só. Não sei sentir-me onde estou. Por isso, alheio, vou lendo, como páginas meu ser, o que segue não prevendo, o que passou a esquecer. Noto à margem do que li, o que julguei que senti, releio e digo, fui eu? Deus sabe porque o escreveu. Thank you very much.